hello guys so in this video i'm going to talk about another non parametric method and that is the k nearest neighbors so in my previous lectures we have uh, seen about the parson window technique and uh, in this technique what we do is we find a region around the point of interest so we saw that if suppose this is the data i am storing over here so in on all, all non parametric techniques we store the data and uh, if suppose i want to find a probability of some point say this is some point i don't know what the point is so there is this some point and i want to find its probability so we take a region around it and uh, we see how many samples are inside the region and that is nothing but our k upon the total number of samples upon the total volume of this region so like this we can find out the likelihood of that particular uh, class now the problem one can face over here is to decide the value of hn so if suppose uh, so if suppose this point is near near the data so if the density of data is uh, is high uh, in near in the neighboring region of the point of interest then it is okay but then if suppose my point of interest is somewhere say here and if i take an hn say of this size so then what is going to happen is even though i can have a point over here or or a point over here but my window will say that the probability of this particular point is zero because there are no samples over here so even though there is some small probability but because of this because there is no training data that encountered a probability over here a space over here so hence it will tell that the probability is zero so because of this the hn it is uh, very important to um, to get what is the hn and this is a free parameter in the parson window so even if if you take a very big value of hn it we have seen in the convergence proof that uh, with a very big value of hn the so we have seen in this convergence proof that if a very big value if we take a very big value of hn this particular thing will get convolved with the true distribution so here if there is a very big h this will get convolved with the true distribution and we will not get the sharp variations of the true distribution so which is again a problem so defining h is overall a problem that is faced in this parson windows technique so what we can do is instead of defining h or instead of defining the volume if we fix h that means that we are fixing the volume because volume is just given by this formula so instead of fixing h what if we fix k so k is the samples that are near to this point in a given region so what if i say i will choose a window for which there are only three neighbors or say in this case say six neighbors in the region so let us see how can we formulate that problem so if suppose this is a point of interest so i want to calculate the probability say this is uh, some small x so i want to prob find out the probability of this small x also please uh, note that you have taken two classes because uh, we can also nicely visualize what will happen if there are two classes uh, over here so uh, for for this case uh, please assume that there is only one class then we'll uh, generalize it for a multi class case so if suppose i want to find the probability of this point so what i will do is 
I will fix some value of k. So this this is a free parameter over here. So if suppose I say uh, let the value of k be equal to say four, so it will see which are the four neighbors which are very close to this this point of interest. So it can be this. This is one neighbor which is very close. It is this. It is this, and say it is this. Or actually, I could have this. Okay. So, so let let k be five, suppose. So these are the five neighbors that are close to uh, the the given point of interest. And now, using the formula, k upon n upon capital V. So now you can see that now the volume will not be fixed because for for a high density region this volume will will be something like this but uh, for a low density region for a region say somewhere over here if i want to find out the probability of point over here say this is y so i want to find p of y so now for say for same k is equal to 5 i will have this as my first uh, the nearest neighbor then this may be the other nearest neighbor this may be the other this may be the other and this may be the so here you can see that the volume has increased so here you can see this this area or this volume is bigger than this area so now you can see that that problem that we were facing in the parson window technique that uh, such sort of problem where uh, there is it is possible that there are some samples over here but we will not be able to get that is eliminated over here so that is the beauty of the k nearest neighbor method and uh, the formula is quite the same you just uh, but over here just instead of fixing v we are fixing k that's it so for a multi class case we'll have this likelihood so now so please remember what whatever we did in our parson window technique we always uh, we always assumed this as our likelihood this is this is not p of x actually it is p of x given some class so because i was just talking about one class over here so in that case it was sunflower so hence Uh, i removed that sunflower notation because we are just talking about sunflower we we know that it is only sunflower but here i am going to extend this to a multiple class case so here i am now going to talk about sunflower and rose both both the classes sunflower and rose so hence i am now giving introducing this notation of uh, likelihood again because now i am going to talk about both the classes so it is this so now if suppose i want to actually classify both of these classes using the k nearest neighbors then uh, you can see intuitively it is very simple so if suppose i have a point over here say this is a point this is a test sample so please remember i am storing all this data so all of these data this data of class 1 this is data of class 2 so i am going to store all this data in my memory and now i have a test sample which is say uh, over here which has a feature which has x1 this and x2 this so we were always taking x1 as size and uh, x2 as luminance so we will continue with it so x1 is the size of the sunflower so for a recap this is the size x1 that i am taking these are images of sunflower images of rose and uh, i am the next feature i am taking is luminance how much bright it is and all that so i have uh, so i had some samples i had some say 100 samples so this training sample is this and this is what i am storing i have some 100 samples of rose so this is this training data that i am going to store next i have some test image some some sunflower some sunflower this is my test image now this is a test image so i don't know whether this is sunflower or this is rose i have to classify it so say the test image feature is over here so it has this size and uh, this luminance 
now i want to figure out whether is it a rose uh, is it a sunflower or is it a rose so what i'll do is i will see say uh, its fine neighbors so i can choose any fine neighbors which are near to it so this one is near 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 1 2 3 4 5 so you can see that this is a sort of region that we get these are the five nearest neighbors of this particular point so here intuitively you can see that it has more neighbors of rose class and it has only one neighbor of the sunflower class so intuitively this particular thing says that this point should be a should be classified to this class that which is say the rose class so intuitively because it has more samples nearer to the rose than to the sunflower so hence we will say that uh, it it should be classified as rose so this is actually what k nearest neighbors algorithm says that you define a value of k so this is a free parameter that you have to define so here i took k is equal to 5 you can take any value of k depending on the application so depend a uh, uh, define a value of k which is free parameter now k i will tell you how many samples of ith class are there in this a particular region or uh, near to it so here you can see that say k of rose is equal to 4 and k of uh, sunflower is equal to 1 so now the probability that it is a rose can be defined as simply 4 upon 5 because there were five samples and out of which four are belonging to rose so probability that uh, it is rose given the particular sample so it is given that this is the sample what is the probability that it is rose so this is this classification that we want this is what we say the posterior so so we have seen we we are assuming this is the bayesian we are using non parameter k means neighbors for the bayesian est, uh, estimate the bayesian classifier so we have seen this in my first video the introduction video so it is the same so here this i can say that it is intuitively four that is four samples are there out of five which are of rows similarly intuitively probability that it is sunflower given x is nothing but 1 by 5 because there is only one sample of sunflower upon the four samples so this is a visual uh, intuition of what the k nearest neighbors is and you can do the same thing mathematically so say for a multi class case from base classifier you have this that uh, probability of a given class i Uh, given a uh, probability of class i given some test sample is equal to probability so we 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 have seen this this is likelihood this is prior and this is evidence and this is our posteriori that we have found out over here so we can so we are mathematically looking out how how this probability will come mathematically so uh, p of x this p of x over here basically tells you that uh, what is the probability of this x that is what is our evidence so this uh, simply tells that uh, it can be a sunflower so it can what is the probability that given that it is sunflower uh, what is the probability of this x into the probability of sunflower prior probability plus given that it is rose what is the probability of x into probability of rose so i have i have covered this uh, in my first video of this course so you can please refer to this if you have not seen that video so this is um, only uh, so this is this now uh, this prior probability i can uh, formulate as ni upon n where ni are the total samples of that class so say for sunflower the there are ni samples so say 100 samples of sunflower upon the total number of samples so 
this is one class this is one. you add all the data samples that you have so that will give me a prior probability of sunflower or any class given uh, i and this we have seen that uh, the likelihood we had been calculating everywhere so this is nothing but precisely this and you are adding it from 1 to m because for all the class so m are the number of classes there are m number of classes so in this case there will be only two classes so m is equal to 2 in this case but then you can have any number of n now uh, since n and b are uh, independent of any class or something because v is just the volume and n is the total number of samples so these are independent so they will come out and uh, you you are just left with i is equal to 1 to m ki so i is equal to 1 to m ki is nothing but our k that we are fixing because this nothing this says nothing but tell me all the samples of all the classes that are in the region so these are all the samples of all the classes that are in this particular region so this is our k and uh, we are just putting these pieces into this Bayesian formula so we have our likelihood as ki upon ni upon v into we have our prior as ni upon n and we have derived this over here from here you can see that this n n v v will cancel out this ni ni will also cancel out and you are just left with ki upon uh, summation of all ki's so this is a mathematical proof of how we we got this this kr upon i so this basically tells ki so how many samples of ith class are there in uh, are in the neighborhood of that point that we are checking point of interest upon total number of this so the probability of this being a sunflower uh, being a sunflower is one out of five and the probability of this point being a rose is four out of five which is precisely what we have got now we can define a, a rule decision rule that whichever probability is greater you assign that uh, test sample to that class so that is the k ne nearest neighborhood algorithm so let us quickly discuss the algorithm of k nearest neighborhood so here let uh, let di be the data of class i so say class this is one sunflower class this is a rose class so the different images of uh, sunflower give, will give different feature vectors so these are all uh, the different feature vectors of sunflower so please remember this is a vector which will consist of the different features so say you can say size and the luminance so one will be size and luminance so all of these are vectors so this is for class i so for class sunflower or for class rose etc next you have to see the point of interest so that is our test sample you can consider this is our test sample x so this is the feature vector this is again a vector of test sample so now what we have to do is we have to define a distance of this point of interest with each sample so this is what actually we are doing this is our x over here point of interest or the test sample we are defining the distance of every other point with this sample so that is what define a distance of the point of interest with each sample so we can do this with simple norm or we can have any distance function uh, this you can do next arrange all these distances in ascending order so look which is the smallest distance the second uh, smallest distance the third smallest distance and the story and select the first k distances so you will get the first k nearest uh, distances of the uh, with res uh, with uh, of this point with respect to the different data and uh, see which class has the majority of samples so see which has the majority samples so this is 4 and this is 1 and you can make the decision in favor of this class so that is a simple algorithm of the k nearest neighborhood so that was all for K nearest neighbor. I hope you understood. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.